Imagine this situation. Bob is spending the day out with some friends and starts the day with a fully charged device. During the whole day, he infrequently uses his device. However, at the end of the day, when he proceeds to look up directions to go home, the phone is near dead. Where did that battery go? Hi, I'm Alice, a developer relations engineer at Google, and I will be helping you understand how battery drain happens in the background so that you can prevent your app from being the cause of unexpected battery drain, such as Bob's situation. Improving your app's battery efficiency will also prevent users like Bob from uninstalling your app. In this video, we will go over the following topics. How are background work and power consumption connected? What are the right APIs to use and what are the best practices when doing background work? How to level up your skills further by inspecting your app's power and network usage. You may be wondering, doesn't battery drain mostly happen when the device is awake? This is true. However, based on an internal research and testing, a major contributor to bad battery user experiences is screen off battery drain. When looking at screen off battery drain, our internal metrics show that the battery is consumed most by the following hardware components, cellular modem, followed by the CPU, then Wi-Fi and Bluetooth combined. Later, we will discuss how to analyze power drain of these hardware components. Another question you might be thinking, shouldn't the Android system be responsible for optimizing the usage? Yes, historically, Android has optimized the consumption in the following ways, dose and deep dose, app standby buckets, app cache state, foreground service usage restrictions, and more. Despite the number of optimizations and APIs we've introduced, they are only effective if you're also using the right tool in your toolbox. That's what this talk is about. Developers like you have a large influence on how successful the device is at managing energy consumption. Let's dive into how to do that. When starting out on your journey to improve your app's battery efficiency, the first question to ask yourself is, have I selected the right tool, the most optimal API, for my feature to run in the background? The APIs available for doing work once the app is no longer visible can be split into the following four categories. One, using only asynchronous APIs along with lifecycle-aware components. Two, optimized scheduling APIs. Three, use case-specific APIs. And lastly, for scenarios to continue a user action, as the name suggests, foreground service. Here's a flowchart to ask yourself to understand which category you should be using. Does the device need to continue once the app has been backgrounded? For example, if you start fetching a newsfeed for your app, finishing this work after the user leaves the app does not provide user value. You should use asynchronous APIs along with lifecycle aware components to cancel the work once the user leaves the app. Is the user aware of this background task? If this is a user initiating the action or where it requires immediate user feedback, foreground services may be appropriate. For example, if a user is playing music and wants the music to continue playing once the app is in the background, you can use a foreground service with the type media playback. For short critical tasks, such as completing a payment, you can use the foreground service with the type short service. If the user is not aware of the work or does not require feedback, you should instead leverage optimized scheduling APIs. For example, doing a periodic backup of local content to the server does not require user awareness. These are great ways to optimize app battery that also enhance user experience. Before deciding on using a foreground service, is there an alternative API for your use case? You can find in our foreground service type documentation alternative APIs that help you manage the runtime lifecycle or trigger the work in more battery optimal ways. The alternative APIs also provide use case specific benefits. The most common scenarios for using alternative APIs are using user initiated data transfers to do large downloads or uploads instead of creating a data sync foreground service. This API has the ability to retry if the transfers fail and will execute only during network availability. Also, using Companion Device Manager for Bluetooth pairing and data transfer instead of using Connected Device Foreground Service. 
Deciding the right tool is step one of the journey to improve battery efficiency. Step two is making sure that you're also using the tool correctly. Let's cover best practices of two of the most common options, using optimized scheduling APIs and using foreground service. Here are three best practices when using optimized scheduling APIs that improve battery efficiency. These tips apply for both work manager and job scheduler. When you go to sleep for the night, would you rather be woken up 16 times every 30 minutes, or would you rather be woken up once and get everything done all at once? The device is similar to the user. The more times the device is woken up, the more energy is consumed. You should declare constraints to ensure that the task runs in more optimal scenarios and when possible, batch the work together. Setting constraints, for example, executing while charging or executing on an unmetered network, help ensure that the task executes during less expensive windows of time. The charging constraint is especially recommended on wear devices to minimize battery drain. By default, the system chooses when to run your task when it is most efficient. It may not run immediately when you schedule the task and the app is not in a visible state. You can exempt this optimization by using the expedited flag. However, you should only do so if the task is time sensitive. There are quotas on how much runtime expedited tasks can run for, since expedited tasks drain more energy than the default running task. A valid scenario where you can use the set expedited flag is for a task that should happen as a result of a high priority FCM. An invalid scenario is to override system optimizations. The default task will execute at a system optimal time once the defined constraints are met. Use the get stop reason method to find out how your task was stopped. For example, if your task often gets the stop reason timeout, there could be an edge case that should be canceled and requires further debugging. We encourage you to track this data via your analytics engine to help you detect how often your task is stopped by the system. Furthermore, if your task times out too often, the system can put your application into a restricted state. Here are three best practices when using foreground services that improve battery efficiency. Avoid using wake locks unnecessarily, especially from a foreground service. Wake locks are a way to prevent the CPU from sleeping when the screen is off. However, they can be tricky to manage and can waste battery when managed inefficiently. Here are some questions to consider when using a wake lock. Are you already using an API that is alternative to holding a wake lock? For example, if you're using Work Manager, Job Scheduler, or ExoPlayer, you do not need to acquire a wake lock. Does the use case require the device to perform even when the screen is off? If you only need to do something periodically and while the device is awake, a wake lock is not necessary. For example, if you're using a foreground service to intermittently communicate with an external device and there is no user value to this communication while the screen is off. Foreground services should only be used for the duration of the user action. Once the action is paused or completed, you should stop the foreground service. Running the service for longer than the user action can allow for other unrelated asynchronous work to keep running and unexpectedly consume battery. For example, if you're running a media playback foreground service for playing music in the background, once the user has paused the music, you should immediately stop the foreground service. You can verify that the foreground service has been stopped in the task manager, available on devices running Android 13 and higher. Foreground services are intended to continue a user-initiated action. Are you leveraging a background exemption to start the service when the app isn't visible? For example, you may be using boot complete broadcast receiver exemption to start a foreground service immediately after the device has restarted. We strongly recommend waiting until the user has indicated intention to restart the action to use this foreground service again. We are also adding restrictions to which foreground services can start from Boot Complete when targeting Android 15. If you're interested in learning more about best practices for either optimized scheduling APIs or foreground service, you can consult our developer documentation linked in the video description. Now I'll hand it over to my colleague, Philip to share tips on how to improve battery efficiency using Perfetto. 
Hi, I'm Philip Quadra from the Android Software Performance Team. We're at the final step of our journey to bettering battery efficiency, inspecting our handiwork. If you want to level up further, you can use the Performance Inspection Tool Perfetto and an Android 14 Plus device that supports on-device power monitoring, such as Pixel 6 and subsequent Pixel devices, to manually analyze power and network usage. First, let's go through the setup instructions. There are multiple methods of getting the system trace. We recommend manually capturing a trace through Perfetto using the custom record settings. First, go to ui.perfetto.dev. It will look something like this. Go to record a new trace to get started. You will need to make some changes for the recording configuration. Set the max duration to support the full duration of testing your feature. We have it set to five minutes for this demo. In Power Probe, on the side menu, turn on Battery Drain and Power Rails. Go to Android Apps and Services Probe and turn on Atrace User Space Annotations. We've selected Activity Manager, Audio, Network, and Power Management Annotations. Scroll down to turn on network tracing in the Perfetto UI. This is a feature that is launching on ODPM compatible Android 14 devices. You can start recording the trace once you've connected your ADB device. There is a lot to learn about Perfetto that we won't be able to cover as a part of this talk. If you're keen to learn more, watch the Performance Debugging Mad Skills series on YouTube. For this talk, we'll profile a media player that continues to play audio even if the user backgrounds the application or turns the screen off. In this flow, I'll start playing music, switch to a different app, and eventually pause the music and turn off the device screen. However, there are a few hard to detect bugs that are resulting in poor battery efficiency. Now that we profiled the major flows of our app, Let's stop the trace and inspect the results. Once you've opened the trace, it will look something like this. We're going to focus on a few attributes to inspect as part of this trace. Use the pin icon by hovering over the corresponding track to pin the important attributes to the top of our trace. I've gone ahead and pinned some key info. You can pause the video now to search and find the same attributes and pin it to your Perfetto trace. Let's break down these key attributes. The screen state indicates whether or not the screen is on or off. In our trace, the device's screen eventually turns off. The top app indicates what is the visible app the user currently has on the device. The device suspend or resume indicates if the device is in suspend mode which helps conserve battery. Note that the device seems to never go into suspend mode on our device. Here's where things get interesting. We are able to use batterystats.audio to help us understand when the audio track is being utilized. We can see that despite our expectations, the foreground app shows that our declared foreground service continues to run even after the music has stopped playing. Also, in device state, long wake lock, we can see that there are two wake locks being held, audio mix and the media wake lock, which continues to run even after the audio is no longer playing. There is also repeating network requests coming from the app denoted in the light green indicators that happen about every 20 seconds, even after the audio is no longer streaming. This request is not related to media playback, so it shouldn't be happening once the app is no longer visible. You can click on each network indicator to better understand where the request came from. The indicators of different colors are coming from other applications. If you take a look at the modem power track, you will notice a corresponding bump in power usage. Remember this chart? Earlier in the talk, Alice mentioned that cellular modem, which corresponds to the modem power track, is the device component that drains the most amount of power. If I had followed best practices, I wouldn't have encountered these issues. 
Pause this video if you want to take a moment to think about which best practices apply to this scenario. Number one, we're manually acquiring a wake lock and failing to release it once the media stops playing. As seen in long wake locks, ExoPlayer Library was already holding a wake lock on our behalf. It is unnecessary in this scenario to manually acquire a wake lock. Number two, the foreground service continues to run even after the media is stopped. The foreground service should be stopped as soon as the media stops playing. Number three, the 20 second recurring network activity is tied to the application scope instead of the view or activity scope, which causes the network request to keep happening even when the app is no longer visible. This is why it's so important to ensure your network requests are tied to lifecycle aware components. Here is another trace now that we've fixed the issues. Notice how the device is able to go into suspended mode, indicated by the suspend resume track. Also, the wake lock and foreground app duration are much shorter, running only for the duration of the media session. We also don't see any additional network requests coming from the app once the app is not playing media. When looking at the modem power track, we no longer see the corresponding power drain bump. We're continuing to make improvements on tooling so that you can better debug performance, both within Perfetto and in Android Studio. If you're interested in debugging power on Android Studio, check out the IO talk that Myonk is giving actionable app profiling in Android Studio. Now I'll hand it back to Alice to wrap things up. Thanks, Philip. Wow, that was quite a journey we went on. Let's recap what we learned. We learned about how background work and power consumption are connected. A major contributor to bad battery experiences is actually screen off battery train. Developers should not solely rely on system optimizations to improve battery life. We learn about how to select the most optimal APIs for running work in the background using this flowchart, as well as best practices using optimized scheduling APIs and foreground services. Finally, we up-leveled our skills by learning about how to record a system trace and inspect the trace using Perfetto to optimize for network usage and battery drain. Android will continue to optimize and build APIs that encourage developers to shift energy away from invisible use cases and towards customer visible use cases that provide measurable value. Remember Bob, thanks to all of your efforts, his device is draining far less battery and he's able to get home. That's all from me. Thanks for watching. <laughs>